continue with the review of President Tinubu's speech, and this time focus on technology and the digital economy. Here's what the president said about job creation in that sector. My administration must create meaningful opportunities for our youth. We shall honor our campaign commitment of one million dollars and the digital economy. Our government also shall work with the National Assembly to fashion an omnibus job a prosperity bill. This will give our administration the policy space to embark on labor intensive infrastructure development improvement boring flight does be provide improved social stability for the poor and the vulnerable. All right, so here's a quote, and this is pulled directly from the manifesto. A Tinibu administration will strive to create one million new jobs in the ICT sector within its first 24 months uh, of being in office. Uh, there was also more uh, from the manifesto. This is on broadband, ensuring that broadband is going to reach 90% of the population by 2025. Currently, our broadband penetration, 48.2%, uh, yep. 48.2% as at uh, January of this year. Uh, and then there's also, also blockchain and cryptocurrencies on the manifesto. We're gonna reform government policy to encourage the prudent use of blockchain technology, finance and uh, technology in finance and banking, identity management, review, revenue collection, and the use of crypto assets. Very interesting. Joining us from our Abuja studio, Oswald Asarati uh, uh, Gobadia, entrepreneur, former senior special advisor on digital transformation uh, to former President uh, Buhari. Uh, good morning, Oswald. You're very welcome. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So can we create one million jobs within 24 months in the ICT sector? Good morning, Rotos, and thank you for having me. I think the last time I was on here, uh, was we're still very deep in trying to move the Nigerian Startup Bill Now Act forward. So that was a few months ago. So thanks for having me back. Uh, now as former, I'm delighted to be here to talk to you about this uh, exciting space. Uh, your question is about um, 24, uh, 24 months and a million jobs. Um, I think we need to look at that as a directive, right? This is a directive from uh, our new president and what we should be saying after understanding the why. Um, we're quite acquainted with the fact that, you know, we have a large population of young people who are trainable, uh, who are very intelligent, um, who can definitely drive, uh, you know, commercial entities and be a big impact to our economy. So the question is, how do we achieve um, this goal, because the directive from Mr. President, we should be not asking if it's possible, but more so looking at what strategies we must put in place to ensure that, it's, that it happens, right? Because it's something we need. It's for the good of all of us, and it's for the good of Nigeria. It's for the good of our progress. So I will be more focused on, I think most of us should be more focused on how do we do it, right? Um, what are the jobs that need to be set up? If you think about business pro uh, processing, uh, those kind of businesses, how do we set those up? Um, how do we acquire um, the, the customers. I mean, we have a few of those businesses now and they do a number of processing for a number of companies across the world already. Uh, Nigeria is perfectly situated for, for this kind of business just from the fact that we speak English as a starting point from the fact that we have a lot of young people and even if you look at our time zone it's it's perfect to to um, to address that and then in addition when we look at uh, the statement as a directive we also need to ask ourselves what else do we need to do to accomplish it do we need to train do we need to increase our training do we need to increase our digital training our digital literacy the increase the increase of our digital literacy so when you see statements like this right you you we should stop um, questioning the possibility and focus on what we must do to ensure that it happens because these statements are, uh, are from the president are to um, increase our economic impact and output. All right, thank you for that. Now, as you mentioned, last time we had you, we talked about the Startup Act. You led the team in getting this put together as far as liaising with the private sector and so on. 
Where are we now? What are you expecting from the administration in terms of getting the Startup Act off the ground? So, as you know, the Startup Act was, was signed into law on October 19th by the former Mr. President, uh, my former boss. And since then, we've made a number of uh, steps towards implementation. Um, the implementation committee was set up, a certain framework was put into place. Um, the, in the Act, you have the idea of a council which brings governance closer to this sector. Um, the idea there is that, you know, we've ultimately uh, picked out from the private sector or the private sector themselves elected, I should say, say, um, um, representatives from the private sector on that council, uh, as a consultative forum representative on the council. So that's sort of where we've gotten up to. And I, I would be honest to say that we've lost a lot of time in implementation, uh, considering how um, expedient the process of uh, developing, uh, conceptualizing, developing, and, and executing the, the actual act took. Um, the implementation process is taking a bit of time. What I would say, you know, to the new government is that, I mean, they actually campaigned on it, so they believe on the principles and the potentials of the Nigerian Startup Act is to probably look at the implementation committee set up and have a real look and probably look at how to change the, the, uh, the framework on how uh, implementation is currently organized. Um, the act itself was developed on what we, call, what we call the big tent approach, which really brought in everybody into the tent to participate in the process of developing the act. Uh, we believe that the implementation process should follow the exact same format and and we should have both public sector and private sector uh, partnered in the implementation process of the act. Fantastic. We're almost out of time, about a minute to go. Blockchain uh, technology and also crypto. What do you make of the administration wanting to explore those areas? So once again, I think it's fantastic. I mean, you know, new technology is the, is the cutting edge of the spare. All cutting technology is right at the end of the spare, but we need to look at what else is on that spare. Um, ultimately, we need to look at all the things we need to have in place. The real issues we have in Nigeria when it comes to the technology space is the formation. Um, anybody who takes over a new organization must look at the organization. How are the entities set up to organize, to deliver uh, on the administration's agenda? So the same thing applies to technology is the current uh, current situation, the current setup of the organization, the right one to deliver on technology going forward, that should be reviewed and, and, and ultimately, um, um, you know, interrogated um, to find that, you know, we have a lot of upcoming technology, blockchain, um, we have uh, AI, and a number of other things. But if you look at the real issues, um, the real issues lie within the infrastructure space. You know, where are we on connectivity? Where are we on medium diversity and connectivity? Uh, where are we on digitization, digitization of our citizens when you think about identity? Um, where are we on digitizing processes within government as it relates to e-governance? So these are the areas where, um, you know, we we need to focus on because you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot leapfrog uh, de developmental process in technology. You must go through the process. You may want to go through it faster uh, with a better understanding on program management, but you must go through the process of ensuring that we go through the developmental cycles and deliver on infrastructure that would help us uh, support new technology like blockchain. Otherwise, what we do is we run the risk of, you know, investing in this new technology but not have the resources to support them and it would be the same thing as we've done with a lot of other resources where uh, the processing of that resources happens you know outside of the country as opposed to in the country great stuff uh, oswald Osarating uh, gobadia entrepreneur former special uh, senior special advisor on digital transformation to former president Buhari. always a pleasure having you well done on the startup act thank you for joining us